Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 30th installment of Coliseum Combat. We're coming at you live from the Armory, located here in the beautiful Kokomo, Indiana. Devin Shot alongside with me, my color commentator, Dan McCown. Dan, we have a great card of fights tonight. We got a great mix of amateur fights. We got a great mix of pros, and also some pro fights featuring some large names within mixed martial arts. Yeah, I know uh, Mark Slater always puts together a good card, but he made this one an extra special card for the 30th show of Coliseum Combat. So looking very forward to it, man. Now we also have a couple changes in the cards. Joe Lyle was supposed to fight for the second time that we were covering these fights. He will not be fighting tonight. Man, I was really excited to see Joe Lyle fight, but for the second week in a row, disappointed to see Joe Lyle will not be fighting here tonight. Yeah, um, you know, though, we got a great, great fight to take the place of that fight. So looking forward to watching Daniel Head back in action again uh, versus Ryan McIntosh. That should be an excellent fight. That's our co-main event tonight. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the local guys. Dan Head hasn't fought in over a year. That's a Kokomo local guy. He's fought with, uh, inside, he almost made it into the ultimate fighter into the play-in rounds there. He lost. We also got um, Jansen Golighty who is one of the guys on the up and up in the uh, lower weight classes. He just experienced, uh, from, what I'm, from what I'm hearing, a tremendous trip out to Denver, Colorado. So that's a personal friend of mine. I know Jansen, and uh, I'm really excited to see him fight. So uh, there you guys have it. We have a ton of fights today. We will uh, come back after you from a quick word. After a quick word from our sponsors, we'll be right back with the action here. Brady L. Davis will take it away with a prayer. We are Fast Play. Yeah, we gotta get started. Bat 30, live from the Armory in Kokomo. We're waiting on the first fights to start. We should be started here very shortly. Uh, we're taking a look at some of the cards. We'll uh, continue to take a look at some of these. We got William Cottrell and Stephen Wallace starting us off today in the amateurs. We got Junior Paredes, Andre Enriquez. We've got Charles Stanback Jr. versus Joshua Hardy. Nick Miller versus Kevin Purvis. The elder, he didn't want me to refer to him as the elder, but I tell you what, this guy looks in shape for a 37-year-old. Really excited to see that guy fighting. He's out of uh, Indiana Pitt and a Taylor High School graduate. We're gonna go ahead and take this one down to the ring. You hear the uh, Brady L. Davis introduction music. Be up here as you see Brady, the ring announcer, stepping up to the ring right now. There he is. We're gonna go ahead and give him the mic. We'll be back shortly after this break.
It is my pleasure to introduce to you Miss Tammy Loftus to sing the national anthem. for this wonderful day and we thank you for this opportunity to gather today to watch this beautiful sport that has grown so much we thank you for the team owners the coaches the managers the gyms we thank you for the fighters these athletes have put in so much of their time and their lives so that we may come and enjoy an event such as this we ask that you be with all the men and women of the armed forces at home and abroad give them godspeed they may complete their missions return home safely to their families we ask also you be with our special friend, Aiden Arnold, as he goes into surgery Monday morning. Please pray for him. We also ask you, uh, you f think about one of our fighters and a member of the Coliseum Combat family, Jordan Kreider, who has had an unfortunate incident, left, leaving him blind in one eye. Please pray for him as well. All this we ask in your son, Jesus Christ's blessed name. Amen. <laughs> Got a bit of information that's new to us. Jordan Kreider originally on this card. Now, didn't know why he was out, but it turns out he is uh, an unfortunate victim of, of blindness in one eye now, which just proves to you how dangerous. I don't know if the, if the incident occurred through fighting, but I imagine it was. That just proves how dangerous this sport can be. A little bit of information, though. Glad to be in the know on that. We are ready to get started. Brady Davis will soon give us the fighter introductions. You see the first fighter getting ready. I don't know that, I think that's Steven Wallace. We'll see exactly. You see the uh, stacked referee right there for tonight's fight. That is Gary Copeland. Talk a little bit about Gary Copeland. This guy's a pretty prominent referee within mixed martial arts. He's actually done some strike force, he's done some Bellator, and he's actually been inside the UFC before, so experience inside the cage for Coliseum Combat again, just reassuring the people how legit this show is, and in my opinion, I think this has to be one of the top shows in the Midwest for MMA, no questions asked. Absolutely, I agree, Devin. You see here Stephen Wallace coming in with a record of 0-3 yeah, and three as we stand tonight and uh, looking for his first victory. <laughs> well, try to get his first victory tonight. We're going to go ahead and take it to Brady Davis. He's going to tell us a little bit, a little bit more about this fighter, the 5'8", 135 pounder.
fighter introductions. I forgot they wait till they're in the cage to introduce. Next guy making it to the cage right now, you'll see right there, William Cottrell. And I think he fought last card, if I'm not mistaken. Man, that guy looks like an athlete right there. I think uh, just by the first glimpse of these two fighters, I'm gonna say William Cottrell's my pick to win this fight. And we'll see. I think we got a good fight in store for the first fight of the night. Yeah, Cottrell coming in, um, standing at five feet, six inches tall. So he's got a couple inch uh, disadvantage there as far as height goes. I'm not exactly sure about reach, but we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, reach is one of those uh, categories not covered on the local MMA profiles. We encourage the fighters to update those because that's actually where we're pulling your guys' records and information from. Some of the weights listed on those will not correlate exactly with the fights these fighters are uh, fighting tonight, so bear with us there. If the weight does not match up, we're pulling it straight from the uh, website. So we're gonna take it to Brady L. Davis for official introductions. Weighing in at 136 pounds even, with a record of zero wins and three losses. Representing the house of martial arts, from Carmel, Indiana, Stephen Scracker Wallace. And out of the blue corner, he is training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and boxing and kickboxing. Sponsored by Rowan Imagery, weighing in at 141 pounds even, with a record of zero wins and four losses. Representing Team Hybrid from Lafayette, William Cottrell. Third man inside the cage in charge of the action, Gary Copeland. Thank you, sir. There you have it, two guys out of the state of Indiana, one from Carmen, the other from Lafayette. Both have not a significant amount of wins in their uh, win-loss columns here. You got Terrell with one win, Stephen Wallace winless so far. Someone is going to come out with a victory tonight. I'll come in and out this one if that's all right. Couple nice shots landed by Wallace early. Terrell got the position against the cage. Trell with the takedown. Looks like Wallace might be trying to pull in a rubber guard here. Looks like he's got that for the triangle trail. Yep. Doesn't that look is close. That he just cinched that up and this could be solving Trell. Well, it looks like it's pretty deep. I can't see the referees. We will check out the monitor here. Not finishing position there by any means. It's just a matter of extending his legs and pulling the arm out. Terrell pulls to an awkward position now. He is on top. I don't know what you call that position. Looks like kind of like some north-south, but not really. And literally a reverse triangle locked in here for Cottrell at the moment. A lot of ground game going on. I don't think he'll on. be able to finish the fight with that position, but uh, definitely controlling right now. Pretty stagnant movement right now on the ground. I do expect the referee to maybe stand him up. Not a lot of movement. Looks like Wallace is going for some type. A nice punch to the head. He's inside control. He's going for the full mount. Nice job of Catrella defending that, getting those legs up. Wallace continues to try to get to that dominant position of full mount. 
Just a matter of swinging his legs over. Ooh, he had it for a second. Nice job of Cottrell defending it. Now he's on top. We'll see if Cottrell can posture up and land some punches. And the round is over. That's going to be it for round one. Dan, on your card, who do you have winning that one? Man, that was a, that was a tight round. I'm not sure who to give that round to. I think I saw more action from Wallace, but uh, part of that round he was on the bottom. Um, I'd have to give that round to Wallace. And he taken into consideration the takedown of Wallace, or of Cottrell on Wallace, but Wallace, I would say, was far more active from the bottom. It was very, very close round. That one's hard to score. That's why I would not like to be a judge. As you see the lovely card curl, Amanda making her way around the ring. Fighters receiving all the tips they can from their corners, trying to regain their breath. Dan, you're a fighter. You fought before. How tough is it to regain your composure and get into that second round? What's the difference from first round to second round? Is there a world of difference? Is it so much tougher to enter that second round and fight? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's very, very, very tough. And uh, depending on what kind of – both these guys look like they're in incredible condition. So – I'm sure these guys would be fine, ready to go for three rounds if need be. We'll see what the second round has in store. We're about to get ready. Gary Copeland starts us off. And the second round is officially underway. Cottrell nice with a kick. nice body kick. <laughs> nice takedown defense by Cottrell. Sprawling out, not letting him get those hooks. And Cottrell is controlling the head of Wallace right now, not really letting him advance here. Both guys pinned up against the cage. Cottrell back to his feet. Nice escape by Cottrell getting back to his feet. Wallace has that leg. He's looking for a takedown, maybe a trip right here, and he's got it. Still up against the cage. We'll see if they can move it away, get, get him pinned down. Wallace looks to be in a favorable position. And almost a reversal there by Cottrell. Shots to the body from Wallace. Man, I tell you what, we've got some good seats right here, Devin. Yeah, you cannot beat it. We are literally right on the action. You can see it's on the monitor right there. More shots to the body from Wallace. Cottrell looking to get out of this. He's going to try to cage walk up. Nice job of using his hips to get him off, and he gets the fight back up on the feet. Wallace has Cottrell pinned against the cage. Talk about being right on top of the action. We are right now in a nice knee to the thigh by Wallace. Cottrell throws Wallace. Cottrell now almost had side control. Same thing that happened in round one. You can see Wallace trying to work for that triangle, pulling the leg up. Shot to the body from Cottrell. Wallace about locking that ankle in. Not much happening from the bottom. Poor Wallace. Looking for that arm bar again. And this is another interesting position here. I don't know what you call these positions. These guys have found themselves in some funky stuff. 20 seconds left in the round. Wallace looks like he still has control of that arm. Not now. Let's see if Cottrell could do some damage. He looks to be making a lot of movement. Shot landed by Wallace, or Cottrell, sorry. And a nice job of Gary Copeland of recognizing that the round was about over, getting in there and stopping any extra unnecessary blows. So I asked you after the first, how do you feel about that second one? How do you score that one, Dan? Man, I'm just going to call it 1-1. How about that right now? <laughs> so we'll call it even. Very, very competitive fight. This fight could go either way in this last round. And that is the lovely Hannah featured on 
MMAgirls.com, some MMA side. I know that we saw her last time. One of the more uh, prominent ring girls here in the local MMA at Coliseum Combat. Lots of tattoos for that young lady. Both corners receiving instruction. And it looks to me like maybe Wallace is in a little more uh, physical conditioning than Cottrell. Cottrell looks to be catching his breath, trying real hard to catch his breath, while Wallace, in my opinion, looks like he's just fine, not winded at all. We'll see if that has any factor into the third and final round of this amateur bout. Gary Copeland gets both sides ready and we're off for the final round, round number three. Two standing toe to toe. Jab missed by Wallace. Oh. Wild throw by Wallace, takedown by Cottrell, and back into the same position we have seen most of this fight. Nice shot landed by Cottrell. He tries to posture up and land some blows. Tough position to really do anything when, with Wallace pinned against the cage and a major shot landed by Cottrell. Wallace in trouble, pinned up against the cage. Blows continue to rain in from Cottrell. Landing lots of shots to the body. And uh, referee Gary Copeland telling both fighters to advance their position. A lot of movement. Looks like Wallace may be going for that arm bar again. He's been trying that the entire fight. He looks like he's got trying to triangle choke triangle again. Now. This guy's pretty good with his legs, very flexible from the bottom. For the fight, for the most part of the fight, he's been in that position, and he's had a couple chances to really lock in that triangle. Yeah, he definitely stays very busy from the bottom. Control out of danger there, possible arm bar again here. Uh, this is my favorite position in May when you see the guy on top, just pick up the guy on bottom and slam. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see that now, but Control postured up and a shot. Almost landed. That would have been a deadly shot. Gets into side control. Nice shot landed to the face by Cottrell. Yeah, Wallace is going to have to explode and get up from the bottom if he wants to win this fight. He's been pinned down there since the beginning of this round. I think with the way the round has gone so far, you have to give this one to Cottrell. Wallace is going to have to get up off his back in my opinion, or he's going to have to find a way to submit Cottrell if he wants to chalk up a W. A couple shots from the bottom landed by Wallace. Again, not a lot going on. You hear Cottrell's corner urging him to posture up. A couple hammer fists low. He postures up now. A couple shots good landed. Shots. He lands two good shots, and he looks like he might have a choke in. Wallace in trouble late in the third round. Ten seconds left. Another weird position here. Oh, Wallace shot. just landing punches, and I think you got to go. Or not Wallace Cottrell landing those punches. I think you got to give that final round to Cottrell. Dan, your thoughts on who wins this one? Um, yeah, I'd have to give the fight to Cottrell. I think that third round kind of decided it, and, and he dominated that last round there. Yeah, I think in my opinion, you give maybe the first round to Wallace and then the next two to Cottrell. Given Cottrell this victory, we will see who has the victory tonight, adding one of very few victories to both of these Carters' repertoires. We'll take it to Brady. I'll actually, we'll check out this replay here. There's a couple big shots. You can't really see the shot on the head from Cottrell there to Wallace, but a couple of those shots look very lethal. Yeah, that was a good way to end the fight for Cottrell, and I'm sure the judge would probably agree with that. You never know what the judges are thinking, though. Again, very, very, uh, very curious to see what the judges actually score this. Anytime I'm watching MMA and I, and I say, okay, I think this is what happened, or boxing at that, I'm always wrong. I don't know what goes in 
to scoring a fight officially, but I, think, I guess that's why they pay the judges. They are the experts at watching these fights. We're going to go ahead see Brady L. Davis getting the results from the score bench. And we're going to take it to Brady L. Davis. He is going to give us our official decision for the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, without going the distance, all three judges score the fight 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. William Cottrell crowned the victor in this one. No surprise to us, and I don't think it's any surprise to the people here at Coliseum Combat 30. He is going to walk away with his second win in his MMA career, moving him to two and four overall. So not too bad for the first fight of the night. I think we had a good mix of a lot of ground game. I'd like to see some more standing up, but I'm not going to tell these fighters what to do or how to fight. But a pretty good fight so far. Next one, we're going to move on to Junior Paredes and Andre Enriquez. We'll take it down to Brady L. Davis. Give him the floor. We are ready for bout number two on the amateur card. Making his way to the red corner. Andre Enriquez. The Andre Enriquez, a 6-1. 165 pound man. His record right now is 2 and 0. Both these fighters, Junior Paredes is 1 and 0, Andre Enriquez 2 and 0. So one of these guys in this fight is going to walk away with their first defeat in their MMA careers. Nice size from Enriquez. You'll see him getting ready. Nice lanky size. He looks like he's got nice muscle tone. 61. I bet that guy's got a pretty decent reach. Haven't seen Junior Paredes yet and what he looks like, but from the looks of it, I think en Enriquez might have a great stand-up game. Those long guys usually like to stand, use their legs and length to keep the game on their feet. So not too much happening right now. We don't have any of those weird instances that we had last time. I think we had two two fighters have to clip their toenails right before the fight. A couple delays right here. Not none of those uh, none of those mishaps happening so far. Doctors just checking the faces, applying the Vaseline to the face. We are underway. Red a six foot, so he is going to be at a one inch disadvantage to Enriquez. Also listed at 155. I'm not sure what this fight, what they're fighting at right now, but you see a 10 point difference in, in weight right there. But from the looks of uh, Paredes, it looks like he might wear that 155 a little bit better than Enriquez. He looks like he is a little more thick. We got two guys long, lankier fighters. I think we're going to have a pretty good second fight of the night with these two. They look both look to be like some superior athletes. And again, this amateur card scheduled for three rounds. The pro card scheduled for five, I believe, right? So tell us about the differences in amateur fights to pro fights. There are a couple different rules, but I believe some of the rules have just changed. Because I think on amateur cards, now you can strike to the head on the ground. Because I thought we saw some of that last fight. Yeah, um, I, I believe you're still not allowed to throw elbows to the head of a grounded opponent, which is probably, to me, the biggest uh, difference between amateur and pro fights. Elbows are, are a nasty weapon. Yeah, Which uh, I guess is why they don't want the amateurs throwing them. And they used to not allow amateurs to throw punches to the head on the ground at all, right? I believe there was some kind of 
weird rule around that. It might just be elbows, but there is a small difference. So keep in mind the differences between pro and amateur fights. This one, an amateur fight of three rounds. Take it back to Brady L. Davis as he introduces the second fighters of the night. With a record of two wins and zero losses, representing Sparta Indy, from Indianapolis, Andre Henriquez. And out of the blue corner, he is a freestyle fighter. Let's check out the tail of the tape between these two guys. See how they measure up against each other. We talked a little bit about it. As you see, the one-inch advantage in Enrique's corner. Also, Enrique's outweighing on their card. I don't know what they're fighting at exactly, but I think, in my opinion, Paredes looks like to be the thicker guy. He might outweigh Enrique's, even though there's that discrepancy in weight right there. Yeah, I believe this fight's at 155. Gary Copeland again, the official for tonight for this fight. Experience in Strikeforce, Bellator, and UFC, so these fighters in professional hands. Ooh, nice leg kick starting leg out kick. by Enriquez. Enriquez going again for that leg kick. And he is definitely looking for And the he gets a takedown. He's, all, he's already in full mount. Got reverse, though. Nice reverse by Paredes. Enrique with the Enriquez with those long legs. We're talking about how lanky he was. It looks like he is just super flexible from the bottom. Doesn't look to be too uncomfortable. Paredes landed some shots to the body from up top. Not a lot happening right now. Same position. Enriquez looks to have a weird, like some kind of weird, what do you, what do you call that, Dan? Um, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you call that, <laughs> but I know he's, he's definitely trying to work for a triangle here, although it's locked up on the wrong side here, but you can tell he definitely has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background. Punch to the top of the head from Paredes. He's delivered those hammer fists. He's got his ankles locked. Not much movement from up top from Paredes. Sorry, I had that backwards. Paredes is on the bottom. Enrique's on the top. Now we'll reverse that. And oh, nice shot to the, the face. And this is not a good position for Enriquez to be in. Continue to land blows from up top. See Gary Copeland get in position, make sure he can see everything that's going on here. Twisting around the top is Paredes. Again, Paredes in the white, Enriquez in the black. So far, Paredes has just been stuck to Enrique's like glue. He went for the takedown right at the beginning of the fight. You can tell he wanted this fight on the ground. And we're kind of seeing why here. Paredes has the back of Enrique's. 10 seconds left in the match, or in the first round. Looking to sink in a choke, only five seconds left. And that's going to be the end of round number one. I think you have to go ahead and give that round to Paredes. He seemed to dominate the entire round. Dan, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I would agree with that, Devin. And this guy is certainly, I'm going to guess, is going to be looking for the takedown again. So we'll see how Enriquez uh, keeps that from happening at the start of the second round here. Again, the mishap. Sorry to introduced these fighters incorrectly. Paredes wearing the white trunks. Enriquez wearing the black. But Enriquez just seems to be struggling with Paredes' domination of the ground game. It's like you said, he was all over 
Enrique's back that entire match. Enrique's not able to do much, especially on the ground. Paredes came out strong in the first in the first round with those late kicks to the body, or those late kicks. Now, nah, what do you call it? What do you, it was to the thigh, but you could definitely hear the snap from inside the armory. It echoed throughout this gymnasium. We'll see if he can start out this round and land a nice strike again. He came out first round, guns blazing. Try to get some help wiping up the perspiration on the logos. Gary Copeland gets the fights ready, and we're ready to take the second round. Paredes again starting out the round in fine fashion. Again going with those kicks to the body. Seems to be his go-to strike. And a spinning back kick, not landed almost. Oh, big shot landed. Right back to his feet though. Enrique's going with the shot. Paredes locks him up. Going Nothing for the for takedown. But it's Enrique's coming out in dominant position. He's looking to land a flurry of punches. I think he's got Paredes kind of dazed right now. And, now and Paredes, Paredes going with the uh, takedown. So a hey, crazy first round starting out hot. A lot of changing in positions. You had. You can see Enrique's has uh, one leg tied up right now. Trying to keep Paredes from advancing his position. Does not want him to get a full mount. So a lot of people prefer on the top to be in the side mount to the full mount. Either one's not fun when you're on the bottom. And Paredes dropping Enrique's, picking him up a little bit. I was talking about that's the thing that I love to see. Small strikes thrown from the bottom by Enrique's, not much damage done. Paredes trying to posture up and land some strikes to the face. It looks like he has a couple jabs landed. Paredes continuing to try to posture up. Enrique's looks like he might have control of one of the wrists and he lets it go and he's unleashing some punches. Not much damage done though, nice defense by Enrique's. Yeah, Enrique's right now just holding on, trying to prevent more damage done by Paredes, but, and the ref stands him up, so that did the trick. So not too much movement from the ground. Gary Copeland's gonna stand these fighters up, and Paredes going right back oh, to that leg kick. kick. And a spinning kick. Crazy scramble. <laughs> Ooh, nice, oh, shot. nice shots by Enrique's. I think Paredes might be dazed. He looks to be a little bit winded, just not here right now. Enrique's going with the oh. punches. He's landing a couple in a right uppercut, left uppercut, right jab. Oh, oh. and a big shot to the body. Whoa. Enrique's ending this round. In an amazing fashion, he did not let up one bit. He smelled blood. Unfortunately, not able to end it. But I tell you what, I think he did some major damage at the end of that second round. Yeah, I would definitely call this fight even going into the third round here. We'll see how much damage was done to Paredes with that last flurry there. He's definitely winded right now. Yeah, he looked winded during that round, and those punches came in bunches. Advantage right now, Enriquez will take a look at the replay. Watch some of these punches. He lands one, two, misses with one. And I'm telling you what, he was a couple yeah. inches away from ending this oh, fight. Oh, big shot to the, to the body. body. Yeah, that one big shot to the body. You could hear the snap in this gym. And I thought I noticed earlier in the round that it looked like Paredes may have injured his knee on one of the takedowns that occurred. And the doctor's over there looking at his knee right now. So we'll see if he's able to continue or not. That Enrique's, and they're and gonna they're call the fight. Gary Copeland has received word from the doctor. This fight cannot continue. You saw right there, 
Enriquez, or Paredes holding that right knee. He cannot continue, and Enriquez you. is gonna win this fight by default. I will tell you this, that uh, Paredes showed a lot of heart because that happened early in that round and he willed his way throughout the rest of that round. Yeah, a lot of times you receive an injury like that, you get the adrenaline rushing in these fights, you might not recognize it until you get your bell rung like he did late in that second round. So Enriquez taking this one down due to the injured knee and you'll see how bad Paredes is struggling with that knee, I think he might be seriously injured we'll go ahead and take it to uh brady l davis he's going to give us our official decision of the fight So a TK knockout for Andre Enriquez. That's gonna move his record to three and O. Oh. Overall, that man has yet to be defeated. Continuing his undefeated campaign here at Coliseum Combat 30. Yeah, and hopefully whatever happened to Paredes' his knee is, is nothing major. Yet. Yeah, we saw some serious injuries last time we actually had the uh, meat wagon come out onto the cart and take someone off, and you hate to see that. But again, that's just one of those realities of a sport like this. I mean, we got some physical specimens out here, and it really takes a true competitor to take the beatings this sport hands you day in and day out. So next up, we're going to have Charles Standback Jr., and Joshua Hardy, again, another amateur bout, three rounds. And these will, without a doubt, be the two biggest guys on tonight's card here. Yeah, we'll see. We see weights of 300, weights of 264. I think we're gonna see a lot of standing and banging because that's what the heavy guys like to do, not a lot of ground game. We've seen a lot of ground game in the first two fights. I think we can guarantee some uh, standing and banging in the second one. Thanks to our sponsors, as you see there, Sequel Motion. We'd also like to thank some of our other sponsors, Bella Pizzeria, for providing us with pizza each week. Some of the best pizza in town. I advise you all to head to the Markland Mall and check out Bella's Pizzeria. You see the you see the size differentiation from the first couple fights. We got a guy right now. He looks to be every bit of 300 pounds. I don't know which fighter this is. We got Joshua Hardy right here. He's 0 and 2 overall, but man, the size on that guy. If I'm not mistaken, I, I believe he's got to be 265 or under. 265 or under. Well, you talk about. Joshua Hardy's listed at 264 on his weight you know, on the official MMA uh, information. Charles Stanback Jr.'s listed at 300, so did Stanback have to cut a significant amount of weight to get to this fight? Probably so. What weight did you fight at, Dan, when you fought? Uh, light heavyweight, 205. Light heavyweight. And these guys seem to get a little bit winded quicker than the other guys. Man, but I tell you what, I really like to see the big guys fight. Brady L. Davis introducing Charles Stanback, going with the smooth music. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. You usually get the guys coming in with the with the hype up song, something a little more fast paced. This guy. A little smoother than the others. And I actually remember this guy now taking a look at him. Yeah. Charles Stanback, he fought at the last Coliseum Combat. This is a scary guy. You look at that size. Man, this guy is a bull. You do not want to catch a heavy right hand from this man. <laughs> a change of pace. I like, what was, what was your song, Dan? What did you come out to? I Man. mean, it, it's all about your mindset, and I think that music really does give you a mindset. Kind of questionable to 
hear this song, but what, what was your selection? I, I came out to the heavier metal type music yeah. myself, man. <laughs> Something more to get you in the mode of fighting, but hey, Charles Stanback may be a different breed of people. Maybe this puts him in the mode to bash some faces in. You never know. He gets greased up, gets ready for this fight. I know, Again, I know a lot of record. fighters like to like to come out with a clear mind, and uh, I'm sure for some guys the the heavier music doesn't exactly <laughs> clear your mind. I'm a little too young to uh, I don't know is this Al Green? Who is this? I'm not sure. You're not sure <laughs> either. So maybe 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 our parents would know. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like something maybe my dad would pull out of his iPod. I like it though. <laughs> Different feel. Coming up next, next fight of the night. That was that, yeah, that was Luis Guerra. That's not going to be the next fight of the night. Kevin Purvis and Nick Miller are scheduled for the next fight. We will see Luis Guerra in a few bouts. That is one man that is my favorite fighter. I hate to pick favorites, but he's my favorite. We're going to go ahead and leave it, take it down to Brady L. Davis as he introduces both of these fighters in our third fight of the night. And out of the blue corner, he is a sumo style fighter, sponsored by Mercy Road Church, weighing in at 255.9 pounds, with a record of four wins and zero losses, representing Fisher's mixed martial arts and boxing. From the east side of Indianapolis, Charles. Side of Indianapolis, Charles Stanback Jr. looks more like a professional pulling guard in the NFL or something. And we'll see Michelle Drake for the first time tonight. That is our official for this fight. Both guys in the 260 pound range, so a lot of weight in the cage. Right in front of us right now. Now, big Stanback Jr. dropping him to the ground. He's in a dominant position and now. He is looking to lock up an arm triangle choke. Stanback Jr. Which may be sunk in pretty deep. He lets that go. He's got the full mount. He looks to posture up. Again, this action right in front of our faces. What a seat to have. Stanback trying to posture up. He looks like he's working for it. But again, in the full mount, arguably the most dominant position to be in in mixed martial arts. He postures up and he lands a couple shots. Joshua Hardy not able to rotate those hips hard enough to push Stanback Jr. off him. Stanback remaining in the full mount. And we can see right in front of us. And a Stanback. big shot, Stanback Jr. landing on the face of Hardy. And again, another shot. This could be bad for Hardy. Stanback Jr. having his way from the full mount position and another shot right to the beak of Hardy. Yeah, at this point, Hardy has no answer from the bottom for uh, for this full mount that he's stuck in here. And I'll tell you what, 300 pounds on you in a full mount position, tough to get off you. Stanback Jr. right now dominating early in this first round. And looking to tie up a key lock and that is deep, and that's a tap, and that is it. <laughs> that's a nice submission by Charles Stanback Jr. I think he could have ended that fight in multiple ways, but he goes ahead and gets the submission. Quick fight, quick ending for Charles Stanback Jr. In this first yeah. round. Tough fight there and for Hardy. Uh, so he got, got taken down from the get-go, and there you see a replay of that lock, and that was deep, <laughs> and that hurts my shoulder a little bit just <laughs> watching that. I mean, we literally were stand or sitting right in front of that. I saw him tweak the arm. I kind of had a grimace on my face. Another, Glad we didn't see something snap. Another impressive performance by Stanback. So Stanback's going to move to 5-0 and oh in his career, and I tell you what, this guy is making waves in MMA, especially locally, fighting out of Fishers, Charles Stanback Jr. You see Michelle Drake raising the arm of Charles Stanback. So that music is, is doing the trick, <laughs> Devin. I tell you what, he is the smooth moving, power grooving 
gravy train love and Charles Stanback Jr. I tell you what, that guy has impressed me the past two times we have been here. And I can't wait to see if we get to see more of this man coming down the road. So what a amazing. And we'll see his record 5-0. and That's current after this win. Just a big man. I'll tell you what, he, he really does look like he should be playing pulling guard for the Alabama Crimson Tide or something. <laughs> big guy. We'll see more of him in the future, I am sure. So uh, what a way to end the third fight of the night. Next up, we're going to have Nick Miller and Kevin Purvis. Kevin Purvis won his last bout. He's 2-0 overall. He's 37 years old, which is pretty old in the age of MMA. But I tell you what, this guy looked to be in tip-top shape earlier. We were talking before the fight. He said, hey, don't refer to me as the elder. But he didn't look 37, I'll say that. He looked to be in way better shape than 37 years old. But he won by a knockout last time he fought. We'll see if that can continue here. That's going to be Nick Miller making his way to the cage. You'll see his record up 4-0. And again, Kevin Purvis, 2-0, one of these fighters going to walk out today with their first loss of their career. Moving at a pretty quick pace, I'd say, compared to the last time we covered these fights, we're already three fights deep, entering the fourth at Coliseum Combat 30. Again, like to thank our sponsors for their continued support of our product here at FastPlaySports.com. And again, if you guys are listening right now, please, we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, like our page on Facebook, and show us the kind of love. We need more followers on Twitter. I'm not begging for followers out here, but if you guys like our product, please, we encourage you to follow us on Twitter. And again, Burnett's Auto, thanks to our sponsors. You see the graphics right there. We appreciate you guys. You're the best. Brady L. Davis calling the name of Kevin Purvis, the 37-year-old phenom from Kokomo, Taylor High School graduate. Again, 37 years old. That man looks to be in great shape. We'll see what this man has to, has to offer in the octagon. I'm excited to see it. I think, I think. We're going to see a great fight for Mr. Purvis. Let's go ahead and check out the tail of the tape, tail of the tape between these two guys. Purvis, obviously the older one in this bout, but he's got an inch height advantage. I don't know if that'll correlate to any advantage, but I tell you what, being the older guy, I guarantee you Purvis has been doing this longer than Miller. He might know the ins and outs a little bit more. We'll see if that has any effect in the outcome. I tell you, what, I hope I look, I look to be in that good of shape at the age of 37. I'm a, quite, a, quite a ways away from that, and I think I'm in worse shape right now, obviously. So. <laughs> Purvis, a poster child for staying in shape. Purvis fighting out of Indiana Pitt, a local gym here in Kokomo, on the north end of town. From Peru, Indiana, Nick Wildwood Miller! Now to the blue corner, his train in Hawaiian tempo. Weighing in at 182.8 pounds, with a record of two wins and zero losses. Representing Indiana Pitt, from Kokomo, Kevin! And one of these two fighters, O, is going to go after this fight. We'll see who it is. Leg kick to start it off there. 
two no fighters way filling each other out. Him. Miller going back with the leg kick. And again with the leg kick, not landing too hard. No smack heard. Purvis getting in on Miller. Purvis has Miller's back. It looks like he might have he a choke in. It choke looks in. like it's pretty deep or right in front of deep. the action right now. They're fighting for and hand position right Purvis now. Purvis laying some shots to the face of Miller. Still has that arm underneath the neck of Miller. He's still trying to work in that. Oh, and it and looks like it's pretty deep now. right now. Purvis is looking to flatten Miller out on his belly. And this choke is really close to being cinched in there. And Purvis continuing to lay shots to big the head shots, of Miller. Big shots landed. On the ground. I wouldn't be surprised if Miss oh, Drake it's ends over. fight. It's all it over. Is over. Michelle Drake's call this fight. And I think that Nick Miller is out cold on the mat right now. Purvis absolutely dominating this fight in a quick instance. Very the 37-year-old phenom very ending this impressive. fight quick. And Nick Miller, ladies and gentlemen, and here you see Purvis really has the dominant top as if he still has that arm under the throat, even though he's not cinching it. Miller's having a hard Miller. time Big breathing shot. there. And Purvis is going to start unloading shots, and the fight is over. Now those two, two blows from the left hand of Purvis just ended it for Miller. Miller, you see him right now getting checked by the doctors. I think he went to sleep for a second. Yeah, Michelle he, Drake doing was, a great job. Shout out to up. the official for this fight of ending it when she did. She stepped in at the perfect time, in my opinion. But wow, what an amazing electric fight for the fourth fight of the night. First time that uh, Miller has tasted defeat in the cage, so his record will move to four and one now. Kevin Purvis gonna move to three and zero oh in his career. 37 years old, and he's 3-0 in his mixed martial arts career. The older of the two getting it done. I'm not going to call him an old man because he would probably whoop me down in the octagon. But Kevin Purvis supporting Indiana Pitt, getting it done today in the fourth fight of the night. Ends it in the first round due to TKO, knocking Nick Miller out from his back. Wow. Impressive, impressive <laughs> victory there. So we're gonna move on to the next one and I've been excited about this fight. We have Lamonte Dixon against a local guy, Jansen Golighty. I know this kid personally, he's a great kid. Doesn't strike me as the fighter type, but I tell you what, this kid is not scared to stand and bang and he is making all the moves necessary to advance himself within MMA. Again, shout out to our sponsors, Coffee Junkies. American Party Time. You guys are the best. Thank you for your continued support of FastPlaySports.com. Jansen Golighty, though, he is a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu he just spent a, he took a trip to Denver, Colorado. He was training at the Olympic Training Center, which is a pretty big deal. And he was also training under Gilbert Smith within his trip to Colorado. Gilbert Smith, a Big name within MMA. Take a look at Lamonte Dixon right now with a three and five record overall. But again, Jansen Golighty, the local guy. He's two and one overall. And he has made a ton of moves to try to get better. He is he's left the state just to train. I'm excited to see what that trip possibly taught him. Because from what I heard, he has learned a lot. See Lamonte Dixon here getting greased up. Shell Drake patting him down, making sure everything's good to go. I'll tell you what, we got some great officials tonight. I can't complain. No complaints here from Gary Copeland or Michelle Drake. We got two world-class officials. Take a look what's going on downstairs. We'll see some of the fighters chilling out. That's Gary Copeland, or <laughs> sorry, Charles Stanback Jr. Talking about his fight. Those fighters are hanging out underneath in the basement of the armory. 
that's where all the magic happens outside of the octagon. Waiting on Jansen Golighty to enter the ring, the local kid. Went to Northwestern High School. He's got a ton of fans here tonight. I, I guarantee you the home field advantage is in Golighty's corner. You hear the crowd amping up right now. There's a little bit more electricity as this man enters the ring. The going Samoan as he likes to be called. And I tell you what, he doesn't, he doesn't look like much of a fighter, but this kid's got the heart of a lion. And I'm really excited to see what he learned because he really did go out of his way to try to better himself within the sport of mixed martial arts. I believe Golighty fights out of Gaha, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here in Kokomo, Indiana. Again, a blue belt in Brazilian, Bra Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So tough to get some of these words out in MMA. go ahead and uh, take a look at the tail of the tape between these two fighters, see how they match up. Fair against each other, Go Lighty, only 19 years old, so he's got a ton of time left within the sport. He's got a one inch advantage on the height category, and I believe this fight is at 135, so no weight to cut for that young man. Take it back down to Brady L. Davis as he tells you more about these fighters. From Indianapolis, Lamonte Dixon. You hear there, uh, Dixon weighed in at 140. And, uh, He's a kickboxer and his blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You hear the crowd amp up for the local kid, I guarantee it. Death Squad to that, I said Gaha. So a lot of fans here tonight for Golighty, keep that in mind. As we get the first round underway, Gary Copeland, the referee for this one. And we are underway. Golighty with the front kick. And again with the front kick, caught by Lamonte Dixon. Nice takedown by Golighty. Pinning Dixon up against the cage, trying to pass guard. And again, this kid, a blue belt in Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He will work in a lot of submissions if possible. Yeah, and I noticed on that first scramble that these two had, Dixon did not want to follow this fight back down to the ground. He stepped back, wanted to keep it on the feet. Now he's on his back. We'll see what happens here. Well, I talked to Jacob Herlock, a local fighter that's in Golighty's cage in this fight, and he said Golighty's going to come out, guns blazing, not going to slow down. He can almost guarantee a takedown in the first round, and Mr. Herlock was right. Golighty trying to get to his feet. And he looks like he just passed guard. It looks like full he's got mount. the full mount, and he does. He postures up, tries to land a blow. Lamonte Dixon holding on for dear life, trying to stay as close to the body as Golighty as possible. Golighty doing a good job of posturing up, pushing down the head of Lamonte Dixon. And arm bar. And Dixon is not in good position to try to defend this. Looks like Golighty let the arm go. He's still going for it. They're fighting for hand position here. And this is when that blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu comes into play. Told you a little bit about his trip to Denver, Colorado, training under Gilbert Smith. 
training at the Olympic and Training Dixon Center. Dixon did a great job to get out of that submission. Phil Lighty doing work on the bottom. Dixon looking looks for like a triangle. It looks like he's got and it. That is locked in. He has got it in. Dixon tapping. It, nice job. Go Lighty going with the arm bar yeah, from did. underneath. What a crazy position to throw in an arm bar. But I tell you what, talking about his jujitsu skills, and I think that trip to Denver, Colorado, and the training that he just did gave him that ability. Nice job by Mr. Go Lighty. Ending the fight via armbar. What an athletic position. Let's take a look at that replay. You see and here he sinks it in. Talk, take me, take it away, Dan. He's got the triangle locked in here. Also has the armbar. Hard to see from this angle, but the armbar is what ended that fight. Man, upside down. Pulling in an armbar. Looks like a monkey. Oh, I'd hate to fight those kids. Those guys that just won't let go of you. That but was, I tell you what, uh, more and more effective. Jiu-Jitsu right there. Nice job by Jansen getting his third victory of his MMA career. Only one loss, so he's going to move to three and one in his career. But again, lots of fights getting ended quickly here at Coliseum Combat 30. Yeah, this car at this is rate, we're gonna be by. <laughs> this rate, we're going to be out of here by 10. Two minutes and 24 seconds in the first round. Your winner by tap out to the arm bar, Jansen. And the win for the going Samoan. He is going to get the belt draped around his waist. A well-earned win for the Kokomo local kid. Love to see Jansen getting that W. Nice job from the young fella. 19 years of age. Ladies and gentlemen, watch out for this kid because he has a ton of years left under his belt in this sport. And speaking of belts, 19 years old and a championship belt, that's a... Uh very good start to this sport. That's going to be the fifth card of the night. Fifth fight of the night over with pretty quick. Check the time here. We're only at 9.05, so we're flying right through this card. That's going to move us on to Ronez McGrady and Christopher Sprinkle. And I think that's going to be the first pro fight of the night. So yes. different rounds now. Pro yes. fights are going to be three five-minute rounds, not three three-minute rounds. So a lot more time for each round. And as you know, these pro fights are a complete different thing. I mean, there is just a complete level of jump, of level of ability. We saw last time the pro fights offered some amazing, amazing viewership from our standpoint right here. We'll see if if uh, the quality of fights will be the same for the pros, I think we're going to go ahead. Are we taking a Are we taking a break? Or we, we are going to take an intermission here. We're going to take an intermission between the two fights. We'll take a quick, quick break with a word from the social experience, and then I guess we'll be right back and take it off from there. We are fast play.
Combat 30 live from the Armory in Kokomo, Indiana. What an amazing amateur card that we had already. Some quick finishes capped off by a belt given to Jansen Golighty. We're gonna have a slight intermission before we send you off for just a second. We'd like to thank our sponsors. If we can pull up the graphics for all of our sponsors and recognize them individually. Barker's B&K, Marklin Avenue, some of the best Coney dogs you'll ever eat in your life. Thank you, Barker's B&K. Cagecraze.com. Club Fitness 24. The Elbow Room. Fade Salon. And ourselves, FastPlaySports.com. FlyEyesGear.com. Those crazy sunglasses. I'm a beast. Intimidation MMA. Easily Isley's Plumbing Service and Jesse's Hot Sauce. That stuff's way too hot for me, but if you like hot sauce, that's the way to go. Miami Cab, if you need a ride, call Miami Cab. See the number right there. On-site services providing corner potties when needed. The Quality Inn on E 1709 East Lincoln, Kokomo, Indiana. That's where all the fighters stay when they come to town. So thank you, Quality Inn, for allowing those guys to stay there. Rev Gear, Pro Gear for Pro Fighters. The social experience, that's the place to be on the weekend here in Kokomo, Indiana, no doubt about that. And that is also where the after party is. So catch all the fighters, all the winners, and everybody celebrating there. Tim Weber's famous loudspeakers you guys don't know about Tim Weber's speakers, then you're not from, or Ted, sorry, Ted Weber's speakers, then you're probably not from Kokomo. An amazing, amazing speaker company based out of here. Top of the line auto detail. Sequel motion. Burnett's Auto Sales and Service. And Coffee Junkies. American Party Time. Your source for anything party. AMPS Electric, Gar Gaha Jiu-Jitsu. Man, those weird spellings get me all the time. MMA's got a ton of weird words. Gaha Jiu-Jitsu. Ton of local guys fighting out of that gym. Also like to thank Bella's Pizzeria for their continued support of FastPlaySports.com. We're gonna take a quick break, we'll be back after this short intermission, we got some pro fights coming up. Let's go ahead and take a uh, look at the tail of the tape of the first pro fight of the night between McGrady and Sprinkle real quick. Give you guys a little glimpse of what kind of action we're getting into for that first fight. You'll see McGrady, the elder of Sprinkle. That's not the right picture for Sprinkle. We apologize for that. But Sprinkle, 6'4", he's gonna have a three inch height advantage on McGrady, but I guarantee you we're gonna have a great first pro fight of the night. If they're gonna be anything like the amateur cards, we're gonna have a great show for you guys coming up. We'll be right back after this short inter intermission. Don't go away, please stay there with us. We'll be right back, we are Fast Play.
I put that headset on me for Yep. Good. And we're here at FastPlaySports.com with the champion, Jansen Golightly. Go Lighty, Jansen, I was telling the crowd about your trip to Denver, Colorado, and what what possibilities of, of techniques you've learned and everything and how much that helps your game. Tell me, what did that trip do for your game in advancing your skill in MMA? Oh, man, it just it just made me all around a better fighter. I, the altitude helped me a whole lot. I was training under my uncle, he's a black belt, his name's Jaco Khalili, so he helped me a whole lot. I have like a whole notebook full of stuff I learned in Colorado. It was definitely worth the trip. I'm definitely gonna go there for every other fight camp now. So you moved to three and one, and you got the belt. How long until you make that jump to the pros? Because I tell you what, you look really good tonight. Well, I'm thinking about just doing 10 fights and go pro. I don't, I'm not really in any rush to go pro. I wanna get all the experience I can, but it's looking like 10 fights and then pro. So when can we expect to see you fight again? Uh, actually, I'm going to take a little bit of time off. I'm going to go to school and save up some money for my other fight camps. But um, hopefully, towards the end of the towards the beginning of next summer, I want to be back in here. Okay, so folks, there you have it, the champion of the 135. Yep, Jansen Golighty, the local kid. Congratulations on the win. It was great to see you, and uh, we hope to see you more often. And uh, we hope to actually see you advance into the pros. Because I tell you what. Knowing you and seeing you out here today, it was a great experience, and you, you fought very well. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming. It was great. There you have it. Jansen Golighty, the new pro, the, or the new champion of the 135 weight class at Coliseum Combat. We are Fast Play. Thanks, man. You thank you.
to start the pro set of fights on the card. Go ahead and take it to Brady L. Davis. He's going to go ahead and introduce the first fighters of the pro section of Coliseum Combat 30. First fighter of the day fighting from outside of the state of Indiana. See there, coming from Illinois. A record of five and one overall. And again, we'd like to uh, reiterate the fact that these are pro fights, not amateur fights. They will be three five minute rounds instead of three three minute rounds as we just viewed. glimpse at the fighters getting ready downstairs. And there you have Ron as Ronez McGrady. He's out of Indiana. A little more experience under his belt. Record wise, he's eight and two. Go ahead and uh, take a look at the tail of the tape, see how these two fighters match up against each other. McGrady, 36 years old. Sprinkle only 24, but Sprinkle with a three inch height advantage over McGrady. See if that correlates any way into this fight. Weird like choice of uh malfunction here. McGrady going with the long pants. I don't think I've seen a fighter yet go with the entire long pants setup there. A pair of colorful tights for McGrady, you see there. a lot of time to get to the cage. I don't know what problem we had earlier, but we saw the officials from the commission come over and say something to Michelle Drake. The referee getting McGrady ready right there. And McGrady will finally make his way inside the octagon. Go ahead and take it down to Brady L. Davis as he introduces both of these fighters.
Brady L. Davis informing us that this is both of these fighters' first pro fight of their careers. So we'll see which one of these guys have the ability to knock out their first victory in their first ever pro fight. Representing Team Fire from Indianapolis, Rodez, Nance Fire, the Green. Both fighters appear to be in tremendous shape. I don't think that the uh, longer professional rounds are going to be an issue for these two. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. McGrady comes out with a looping leg kick. In a weird exchange as McGrady was caught up with one leg in the air. McGrady going back with that leg kick. And again, tries to counter with the spinning back fist, not landed. The two are locked up, McGrady with his back against the cage. Sprinkle trying to land some knees with McGrady pinned against the cage. Not very successful. Both fighters just kind of fighting for position here. Sprinkle with a couple shots to the body. much happening a pretty stagnant lockup between these two fighters sprinkle going for the trip sprinkle lets go tries to land a huge punch misses and now he's got McGrady back against the cage Try to exchange knees. McGrady's back still against the cage. Sprinkle trying to work in a clinch. He lets it go and lands a right uppercut on McGrady's chin. McGrady with, connects with the left hand. Big knee from McGrady in the clinch. And McGrady's back's against the cage again. Flying knee landed. Wow. And that is it. Wow, talk about an electrifying finish. Just when you thought that the fight got stagnant and boring, Christopher Sprinkle comes with a flying knee flush against the chin. Check it out on the replay. Wow, man. beautiful. Wow. Beautiful strike right there. That doesn't land much cleaner. Right on the jaw, and that is it. One right more on shot for good spot. measure, but that fight was already over from the knee. That was a beautiful strike. Christopher Sprinkle adding to the already electrifying atmosphere that we had, starting off the pro card the right way with a victory. TKO due Gee. to flying knee. McGrady Man. in the background coming to now, wondering exactly what happened. And he's very wobbly and dazed on his feet, so. Yeah, McGrady is definitely hurt. That's a feeling that I wish to never have in sports because I think when you consider every sport there is, getting knocked out, I mean, that's probably the worst feeling in all of sports. But Christopher Sprinkle moves to 6-1 and one in his career, 1-0 and oh in his professional career. Debut. Wow, what a
what a way to end a fight. What a way to start the pro card off. It just keeps getting better and better here from Coliseum Combat 30. Sprinkle getting some treatment. McGrady did cut him above the eye. But Sprinkle awarded the victory. What a finish from that man. We'll take it to Brady L. Davis as he will give us the official decision of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, at two minutes, 29 seconds in the first round, your winner by way of knockout, Chris Sprinkle! Sprinkle in his first ever pro fight comes out with a W, knocking out Rones McGrady via flying knee. And I think that we're going to see that knockout in a couple extra places once this fight's over. Expect to see him. Maybe Boss Rudin talking about that knee. We don't know. But what a finish from the first pro fight of the night. going to advance us to the second pro fight of the night. We've got three more pro fights under our belt for you. I should say up our sleeve for you. Not yet under the belt. Next fight, we got Luis Guerra and Reginald Merriweather. I tell you what, last Coliseum Combat, I was really impressed with Luis Guerra. And, uh, I think that he's my favorite to win this fight. We don't, I don't necessarily know of Reginald Merriweather, but there you see Luis Guerra right there. That man, he is scary. He won in dominant fashion last, last fight, Coliseum Combat 29. And that man's got a story behind him. Luis Guerra struck by some tragedy, lost his mother, few siblings in a fire not too long ago so that man what a heart on him to stay with his dream and keep doing what he does best you see Reginald Merriweather right there getting greased up he's four and five overall he's gonna have a two inch height advantage on Garrett again these are pro fights it's scheduled for three five minute rounds Came out to no music for his entrance. Interesting choice. We've heard the smooth stuff, we've heard the head banging stuff, and we've heard no stuff. I'd like to reiterate everybody, please follow us on Twitter at Fast Play Sports.
Luis Guerra choosing to come out to music like most fighters. Follow us on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash fastplaysports. Luis Guerra, four and two overall. He's fighting out of Fisher's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Boxing. And he would also like me to say that he represents IBG. I don't know what that means, but hey, I told Luis I'll say whatever he wants because this is my favorite fighter here at Coliseum Combat. I really like what this kid has to offer. And I tell you what, in terms of levels of preparation for a fight, I think I've seen more out of Guerra than any other fighter. Last time we were here at Coliseum Combat 29, he was the first fighter here to enter the cage. He was rolling around, really feeling out all the soft spots of the mat again today, doing just the same. You'll see him rolling around the mat. Not a lot of, a lot of other fighters do that. You'll have guys come feel it out, but this man rolls around all over the mat, making sure that he has the right feel for it. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape, see how Luis Guerra matches up against Reginald Merriweather. Guerra, one year the elder of Merriweather. He'll be at a two inch disadvantage. And I don't know what this fight's being fought at. What weight, are you sure? I am not sure. Um, I would like to think 145, but I'm not positive. Luis Guerra won last Coliseum combat. This guy always has a smile on his face, too. I've, I've noticed that every time I've seen him fight, when he's in the ring, free fight, always has a smile on his face. He's a great character, Luis Guerra is. And I'm telling you what, you do not want to miss this guy's fight. He is a phenomenal guy, phenomenal fighter. He does not cease to electrify the crowd. I think we can expect something big from this man today. And we'll take it back to Brady L. Davis. He's going to give us the official introductions. Luis Guerra representing TYB. That must be a gem. I thought he said IBG earlier. It's tough to hear fighters with the mouthpiece hit. <laughs> and Michelle Drake is going to be our referee for this fight. Getting both fighters ready right now, and we are finally underway. Guerra going for the takedown early. Looks to get the trip in. He nearly has it. Merriweather back to his feet. Merriweather reversing position. Has Guerra against the cage. Now he's got a leg. Guerra in the air. Back down to his feet. Guerra's got Merriweather's back. Maybe he's going to drop, and he just drops to the ground, takes his back. And so definitely going to be looking for a choke. He's got that front and forearm right forward. across the chin, not against the neck. He's trying to work it in there. Merriweather doing a good job of defending it so far. Tough to sink that choke in with your back against the cage like that. Looking for it again. Again, it's on the chin. You see break. Guerra slowly flattening Merriweather out. That's going to allow him to sink in the choke, I imagine. A couple 
shots to the feet from Guerra. And a nice reversal from Merriweather to get out of that position. Guerra sliding out of the side. Guerra now on his back with the full guard. Let's see what Merriweather has from the top position here. Merriweather trying to land a moving right from up top. Still trying to posture up. Guerra doing a good job defending on his back. Guerra doing a great job. His defense on his back, not taking any blows, stopping Merriweather from dropping anything from that position. Small shots to the head from Merriweather. Guerra tries to slip it. All about the hips on the bottom, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Guerra controlling the wrist. Back and full guard. Merriweather trying to posture up some big shots thrown. Nothing landed. Guerra seems to be pretty composed with this position he's in. It looks like a guillotine, possibly. And Michelle Drake does decide to stand the fighters up. I like that decision. Guerra going to the Front kick to the body, and he's on the ground. Merriweather trying to sink in a full mount. And Guerra doing a good job of keeping it off. Merriweather falls into full guard. I tell you what, the use of Guerra's legs has been tremendous this fight. Right there, he really stopped Merriweather from jumping into that full guard, keeping his legs extended and keeping Merriweather off his body. Merriweather going with a flurry of haymakers. Guerra keeping his head covered. Nice defense by the young fella. Guerra taking the back. And looking to sink that choke in again. He's got one hook in. much happening. Guerra trying to land some short shots from behind. Pretty much just chicken fighting until the round ends in five seconds. And the round is over. Dan, who do you got winning that one? That was an even round to me. Who do you have winning that round? Well, I'm not very uh, intellectual on the scoring aspects of MMA, but if I had to say I'd agree with you, I'd say that round was pretty even. Guerra did a nice job on his back. Merriweather did a good job of defending a choke that Guerra almost had. Looked like he almost had. As you see the lovely scorecard lady, that is Hannah. It's interesting to me to see some fighters sitting on the stool between rounds and some fighters standing up between rounds. I was always told that the, hot, the taller you stand, the more air gets into your lungs. So, yeah, that is, that is an interesting point to bring up. Most, of, most, most things I've heard is you stand up as tall as possible, put your arms above your head, and try to get as much air into your lungs as possible. I tell you what, after five minutes of one round, I would be on the ground panting. <laughs> I would not be able to handle five minutes of this. The second round's underway. A couple shots to the body from Merriweather. Garrett got him up against the cage again. Ooh, and a nice knee by Merriweather almost landed on Garrett's chin. 
Gare still smile on his face. <laughs> might have a small advantage in the strength department. He looks to be holding his own, but Guerra's got him against the ground. Back against the cage is Merriweather. And what's Guerra working for here, Dan? What, what are his motives in that position? In my opinion, he wanted to pull Merriweather away from that cage a little bit and end up more in a position like this. And Garrett's got him flat. He had him in this position earlier in the first round. Didn't sink in the choke. It looks like that choke is right under, right above the chin. If he sinks that in, it could be bad news for Merriweather. Merriweather doing a good job of having both hands on one hand of Garrett to prevent that choke from happening. Well, that, that right arm that must arm be sunk in, so only, the only, only thing keeping Garrett from hitting that left. Escape. Nice escape by Merriweather, like you said. That was one small slip of an arm away from being sunk in deep and in there. Merriweather tries to work the top. You can hear the corner asking for Garrett to use the cage for an escape. It looks like he's doing just that. can't tell if that's a smile on his face or he's trying to catch his breath. Not a lot happening when these two are clinched up on the ground. I'd like to see him stand. We'll see if Michelle Drake goes ahead and stands these guys up. Tries to posture up, a couple big shots thrown, nothing landed. What does, it seems, you can't see it from the camera there, but it looks like Gara's got something in the midst of working. Like wet fish out of water. These two are flopping around. Side control now from Merriweather and chooses to go back into the half guard. A couple baby shots from up top. Elbow tried to land. Nice block, Gara stopping the right hand from hitting him. Good job of moving your head on the bottom. Not a lot happening. A couple big left shots from Merriweather up top. This could be bad for Gary. He lands one. Merriweather looking to bring down the hammer fist. He seems content just to control the top in this round. So far would have to definitely give this round to Merriweather. If he can hold this position, this would be his round. Trying to flip the hips, get Merriweather off, but Merriweather doing a great job of keeping him down. Trying to just push his forearm against Garrett's head. And that doesn't look like it hurts. Does it hurt? I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you, but. You know, really, I'm not. Big left. Really, I've not had that happen, but I'm sure it's not flat. What, what do those small shots do? do? Those small shots, I mean, we've seen a lot a lot of small shots thrown by Merriweather that round. You know, six-inch punches. Do those accumulate after a while and start to wear on your face? I would say they all add up, definitely. 
So and I think if nothing else, the judges are seeing those small shots. Those are those are points in the judges' eyes. So I think we both agree when we consider that one a win for Merriweather that round. So a pretty close fight if you consider a tie in the first round, even first round, and then a slight advantage to Merriweather in the second round. This third and final round is key for Luis Guerra. A lot could happen. I'd like to see these fighters stand on their feet and maybe uh, in the fight that way. We've seen a lot of stagnant ground game, but for the most part, it seems to be working in Merriweather's favor. As the corners get cleared for the third and final round, Michelle Drake getting the fighters ready. Cage is closed. And we are underway in the third and final round. Ooh, oh, nice that Superman that punch from Garrett. Leaving his feet completely. And Merriweather's on the attack. Sprawled out. Whichever fighter ends up on top here. And Merriweather drilling Garrett in the side of the head, continuing to drill him in the side of the head. About six shots landed to the side of Garrett. Downward elbow, kind of sketchy. Garrett in a dominant position, almost works into a full mount. Now he's going to take Merriweather's back. Merriweather's got a nasty mouse underneath his left eye. He took a shot. I think that's from the Superman punch. I think that <laughs> eye is closed. I think Garrett did that on the Superman punch. Now he's got Merriweather's back. He's had Merriweather in this position multiple times this fight. Hasn't done much with it. Tried to flatten out Merriweather last round. Did a good job of it. Merriweather ended up slipping out of that position, getting back on top. And again, it's, it's difficult to finish the choke with your back against the cage like that. This is a better position to try to finish with the choke. And it looks like he's got both hooks in. Merriweather right now doing a great job of, of keep keeping that arm down. on the chin. His chin is down. It looks like that choke is just slightly away from being sunk in. Merriweather still, it's not under the chin, it's against Merriweather's chin. Doing a good job of keeping that chin tucked. But still three minutes to go. And wow, reversal. Merriweather nicely done. Merriweather now in full guard. We'll see if he can do anything with it. I think we got a pretty even fight considering Gareth's success early in this round the last two and a half minutes should determine a winner. Garrett's corner is yelling at him to use the cage, get his back against the cage, get on his feet and get out of his position. So far, Merriweather, since he's got that reversal, content just to have the top position here. Again, trying to land shot. those short shots. Two minutes to go. This fight could still easily go either way. Yeah, I have no clue. If it went to decision right now, I, I could not determine a winner. I think if either of these guys want to secure a victory, they got to make a major move right now. You'll see Garrett trying to flex that leg. And the ref's going to stand him up again. I like the decision by Michelle Drake. You've got an even fight right now. Not much going on on the ground. Let him stand up and fight. 90 seconds to go. Let's see what happens. I would think Merriweather having a hard time seeing how that left eye was just got clocked again. And the two exchange big blows. I think Garrett got the better of him. It looked like Garrett might have wore a blow from Merriweather there, but able to take down Merriweather. This takedown could be huge considering the point. Falling 
coming into half guard of Guerra. And let's see what he tries to do with this position. Less than a minute to go. Oh, and he passes into the full mount. He's got the full mount. He postures up. Down below, looking for that choke again now. Can't tell with this view how deep that choke is. Just one hook in for Gary at the moment. About 30 seconds left for Gary to really make a major move. I think you've got to give him this fight considering what he's done. Good job by Merriweather again, getting out of trouble, back on top. This fight is just back and forth. For as many takedowns as Guerra has this fight, Merriweather's got that many reversals. 15 seconds to go, Let's see if anything happens here. Looks like Merriweather content just to, to finish the fight in top position there. That and fight. I, Again, I'm glad I'm not a judge because I would not know how to score that fight. <laughs> well, we're going to find out here in a few short moments who is going to be the victor of that fight. I think it was a pretty close fight. Hard fought by both athletes. I don't know. I'm going to take Gara. Who are you taking, Dan? I guess I'll agree with you on that. Uh, just looking at the end product here, Merriweather showing a little more wear on his face from that fight. Um, on the ground, it seemed to be very even. It was back and forth, both fighters, and Merriweather did a really good job of escaping bad positions he was in. Garrett tried to finish it multiple times with the choke. Um, so I, I think I would agree with you. I'd go with Garrett. You see the graphic there for the position, Dr. Carl Taffer providing our athletes with the care that they need. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate your efforts. I'd also like to thank the timekeeper, Nate Bickle. Those clacks keeping us informed on what time we reside in within the round. That sound is just, I like that sound a lot. Those clack, the clacking of the wood. Yeah, that's nice. It's better yeah, than a ding in my opinion. Yes, I would agree with that, very much so. That was a very competitive fight there. That fight could have gone either way. Pretty even, in my opinion. We're going to take it to uh, Brady L. Davis. He's going to have the official judge, or the, fit, the judge's official decision. All three judges score the fight 29 28. For your winner, by unanimous decision, out of the red corner, Richie. Wow. The judges did give it to Merriweather, and they gave it to Merriweather unanimously, meaning all three of them were in agreement. Well, what would you consider the factor that brought Merriweather into victory there? Was it the fact that he was able to escape every dominant position that Luis Guerra had? I mean, I know the first round we both gave him the, the victory of that first round, but what was that X factor that really, in your eyes, made the judges say, yeah, this guy won. Yeah, I think the escapes were a big part of it. And then also just uh, control, cage control is a big thing that the judges look at. And uh, he spent a lot of time on the ball controlling that fight. So all three of them were in agreement on that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our co-main event is about to get underway. This features a guy from Kokomo, Indiana, who has an amazing track record. He is loved by Everybody here at Coliseum Combat, I'm sure you're going to hear the crowd erupt when he gets announced. Dan Head. Dan, tell me a little bit about the other Dan, Dan Head, and his experiences in the MMA world. Um, I know that Dan Head has been on the Ultimate Fighter show. He lost his fight to actually make it into the house on that show. Uh, but to make it to that point is a very big deal. So. Even that's, have uh, the that's, a lot, yeah. that's a lot of experience right there. Even have the opportunity to possibly be coached by guys such as George St. Pierre, Josh Koscheck. I mean, those that's, kind of names, huge. huge. Also, I mean, Dan has fought some major, major names within MMA. Let me give you a quick example of some of the guys he has fought. 
He lost to Ryan Thomas, who I believe we will see next fight. Ryan Thomas, a world-class fighter. Anthony Lap, Lap, Lapsley. That was a that was a guy listed a, in, as a Bellator fighter. So, yes. I mean, when you enter the realm of fighting guys that have had experience within Bellator, within the UFC, you know you are the real deal. I've witnessed Dan Head fight multiple times, and I mean, he puts on a show. This guy can take a freaking beating with the best of them. I kid you not, Dan Head's face is probably the toughest thing within the city of Kokomo limits. <laughs> I mean, I've seen this guy take some serious elbows before like that's absolutely nothing. Well, one thing to be aware of is Dan hasn't fought in over a year. Some outside of the ring things kept him outside of the, outside of the cage. And this is his first time back in the octagon in over a year, but I mean, this crowd, I guarantee you, is super excited to see the hometown favorite, Dan Head. Uh, his opponent, Ryan McIntosh, has quite a bit of experience himself. Um, I know he's fought in multiple venues, and he's a heck of a fighter as well. You know, take a look at Ryan McIntosh's picture here in a moment. Kinds of remind you of uh, 2003, I'll leave it at that. Let, let, the, let the viewers check it out for themselves. Dan had also fought Jeff Lentz. Big name within MMA. You know, there's a lot of guys that say Dan is possibly the best Brazil Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I've had so much trouble with that word all day. <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu. There you go. He is the best BJJ guy in the area. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, what do you think about that? Have you heard that before? Uh, yeah, I have heard that. I have heard that. And, um, and I won't be one to argue that. This might bring back memories for a lot of people that have followed Dan Head for a while, but he used to be called the Honey Badger. I don't know if he still is today, but... I'm pretty sure he locked down that nickname before Tyron Matheu of the Arizona Cardinals had it. And there you see uh, Ryan McIntosh with a lot of fights. This dude has been in the cage a lot of times, so this is uh, this is not new for him, man. Well, he's taken a lot of beatings. You see that record right there. Double the amount of losses is wins, but anytime you got 30 plus fights under your belt, that equals experience, whether you've lost or not. So McIntosh possibly a slight advantage in terms of experience. Dan Head listed at 10 and nine overall. As we wait on Dan to make his way to the cage. Comical shirts, you might see those around Kokomo. I remember actually one time in high school, a kid wore that shirt and was asked to turn it inside out. All it says is, I love Head. He loves Dan Head, that's what the shirt means. Other people just think that it refers to other things, but I tell you what, <laughs> that's a shirt that you're bound to see within this type of environment in Kokomo. Dan Head, a funny guy, great guy to be around. I'm excited to see him fight for the first time in over a year. And I'll tell you what, this guy can take a beating no matter what. And he can also deliver a beating. Definitely one of the best fighters this city has to offer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tail of the tape. See how these two fighters match up. Dan had two years the elder of McIntosh. Head also has one inch height advantage on McIntosh. And this fight will be fought at 145, probably. I would think 155. 155, so McIntosh. Smaller in the weight category, but I don't think that has had any impact on the fights because a smaller guy has won in a ton of the fights today. And I could be wrong about that. I think it's it important to note that between the two guys, 55 fights. That's a lot of experience <laughs> in the cage. Yeah, that is a ton of fights. 
And keep in mind, Dan Hedda's taken a while off. This is his first time back in the cage. Let's take it down to Brady L. Davis. Give him the floor. Still sticks, and I tell you what, it fits him correctly. This guy does not let up. Again, this is the co-main event of the night. Only one more fight after this one. It's going to be a good one, I guarantee it. Michelle Drake asking Dan to tuck in the strings of his shorts, I believe. And we are underway with this co-main event. Nice show of sportsmanship by the two fighters. Two spending a good time trying to feel, it for it, feel out each other. Dan coming with a big right leg kick. Still feeling each other out, McIntosh. Definitely on the defensive. Head going with a big late kick again. Missing. Ooh, a kick High over. kick over the head of Head. And a knee was actually landed by McIntosh on Head, but like I said, this guy can take a beating. It takes a lot to face Dan Head. I think punching him hard only wakes him up a little more. Dan Head facing some adversity early in the first round. We'll see how he fares from now. Nice knee to the body by Daniel. Another nice knee to the body by head. He drops down. Looking for the leverage on a takedown. Oh man, here we go. Oh, and he just sets him down just nicely, kind of gently. I was expecting a slam. Not, not what we saw there, but now Dan Head in full guard. trying to posture up at all costs. Gets back to his feet. Drops down to his knees. It's not a lot happening right now. I'm surprised Michelle Drake's still letting him go. Daniel Head actually has both hands behind the head of McIntosh and is giving him a neck crank, which is extremely painful. Oh, and big, a big right, right, big right. Barely missed by Dan, barely missed, just to the right and side. And a triangle being tightened up here by Machine Gun McIntosh. And that looks tight. He's landing elbows to the top of the head. Trying to adjust the position on that choke. Now, what is Dan's best, what is his best move in this position, considering that locked in there? Basically, his left arm, he cannot get trapped 
in front of his body. He's out. Nice escape from Head. Up and he looks to by deliver. McIntosh. Big shot to the body by Head. Boss root and liver shot, if you ask me. Haven't seen many punches to that part of the body off fight, but Dan Head not scared to exploit it. Elbows by Head. Going with some big elbows. Nice block, though, by McIntosh. And it looks like he's tapping out of the fight. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure why he's tapping out of the fight. I have no clue. It looked like both of those arms, we'll take a look at maybe those elbows that Head was dropping. I saw McIntosh's arms up in defense and maybe Dan Head's elbow just simply blew out one of McIntosh's elbows when he brought it down on his face. I don't know, we'll check out the replay here. That's the tap, but we don't know. I'm not sure what happened there, Devin, to be quite in honest my, with you. In my opinion, those, those two elbows, Dan threw two pretty big elbows. It looked like they were both uh, blocked, but I'm thinking maybe it hit his elbow. We'll see. I don't see anything. I will see what the official decision was. This is a replay again. You just can't tell from that replay. Well, see, there's here's the, the elbow. There's the elbow. Bam. Maybe his wrist, maybe his forearm, but those look like some vicious elbows. To the tap out by strikes. Tap out by strikes, though. So. So a questionable ending to that fight. We do not know what necessarily caused McIntosh to tap. Could just be the fact that Dan Head is such an intimidating person. I, I don't know. Hmm. But it seemed to happen right after two huge elbows from Dan Head. But they were properly blocked. But maybe. Uh, from McIntosh directly, maybe find out what happened. <laughs> From MMA, so no longer will we ever see Ryan McIntosh. He, he just announced his retirement. <laughs> so Dan Head, curious to even know why, well, curious to know why he why he won. He seemed to not know whether it was a submission or what, but. Dan Head, the local guy getting the victory, going to move to 11 and 9 overall. What a weird ending of a fight. We see one guy retire. We see another guy confused as to why he won. Different change of pace from what's been going on. A lot of knockouts, a lot of big, big victories. But I tell you what, we are seconds closer to the moment that we have all been waiting for. The main event of Coliseum's combat tonight, we got Ryan Thomas, who I could talk about hours for. We got Josh Thorpe, who is a pretty prominent name in MMA as well. Let's talk a little bit about Ryan Thomas. How, how prominent is Ryan Thomas within the MMA? Talk about some of the guys he's fought, because I was looking at his track record before today, and. Oh my goodness, this guy has fought some huge names. Yeah, first of all, he's from Coconut C Creek, Florida. Uh, trains with American Top Team, which is one of the biggest teams in the world. Um, he has beat big names like Jason McDonald. He beat Corey Hill, which are UFC fighters. And Corey Hill uh, is on the Ultimate Fighter, I believe. That is correct, that is correct. He, he lost to Matt Brown, who has been and is in the title hunt in the UFC. Um, 
He lost a, a controversial fight to Ben Askren, who is the Bellator title holder. Uh, ben Askren's an amazing fighter. Ryan Thomas, Ben Askren had a very close fight, so that should tell you what kind of caliber of a fighter that Ryan Thomas is. Yeah, we definitely have the big boys in store for last. Two guys that have the professional, the professional experience needed to put on a great, great show. And I guarantee you that we're gonna have the best fight of the night coming at you live last between Ryan Thomas and Josh Thorpe. You see, that's actually Josh Thorpe right there, not Ryan Thomas, excuse our graphic. See with a record of 15 and 12, a lot of experience. Josh Thorpe has fought in Russia for M1 Global, um, which is huge. I mean, to leave the country and go fight in another country, you gotta be a pretty darn good fighter, and that is incredible experience. So, Josh Thorpe is no joke. He's, he's coming out here to, to beat Ryan Thomas. Right? Well, you talk about toughness, and one of those things within the MMA community is how tough those Russians are over at M1 Global, and he seemed to fare well in his time in Russia, 15 and 12 overall in his pro fight. He's fighting out of the U.S. Martial Arts Academy in Cincinnati, Ohio. And like Dan Head, this is Josh Thorpe's first fight in over a year. Over a year. He spends time boxing. He boxes in the light heavyweight class. He is two and three overall while boxing. But you got to think, not fighting for an entire year, is that going to be the route you want to go with a guy like Ryan Thomas in the other corner. It, 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 he could have a little bit of rust, you know. Um, we're about to find out. At the same time, you can't, it's impossible to turn down a fight with Ryan Thomas. And uh, so we're going to see what happens here. A win against Ryan Thomas would definitely solidify a legit status on Josh Thorpe's part. And we'll see his competitor, Ryan Thomas, coming to the ring now. Again, we talk a lot about who he has fought. He has beat some of the biggest names in mixed martial arts. Guys like Ben Astro, guys like Jason McDonald, guys like Matt Brown, guys like Corey Hill. This guy has gone up against him. This man is no punk. He is the real deal, Ryan Thomas, 19 and eight overall. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tail of tape and see how these two guys fare against each other. Thomas gonna be one year the elder of Thorpe. And a pretty big height differential for Ryan Thomas. So we'll see if that is a factor in the fight as well. And see Ryan Thomas there over five inches bigger than Josh Thorpe. That could have a, that could be a huge factor in this fight. That is a lot of height given up. We'll see maybe if Josh Thorpe can work his inner Mike Tyson and get on the body of Ryan Thomas. Amen. What do you expect to see from these two fighters? Do we expect to see standing or do we like expect to see a lot of ground game? Um, I expect to see standing to start with. I'm sure this fight will hit the ground, but um, We'll see how long they stay on the feet. Definitely the biggest fight of the night. The main event of the card, Coliseum Combat 30. Here we go, this is your Coliseum Combat 30. Main you see the lovely Hannah making her way to the ring. Take it back down to Brady L. Davis. He'll give us the official introductions. With a record of 15 wins and two losses, representing U.S. Martial Arts Academy from Mobile, Alabama, fighting out of Cincinnati, Ohio, Joshua the Pitbull Thor. And fighting out of the blue corner, he is trained in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, sponsored by Iron. Weighing in at 169.7 pounds with a record of 17 wins and eight losses. 
Gary Copeland addressing the rules of this main event. And just for your guys' information, this is going to be five five-minute rounds as it is the main event of the night. And also a title fight. Also a title fight. So someone could possibly, or will possibly, walk away with the second belt of the night. This fight is going to be huge, I guarantee you. And we are underway with the main event. These two did not touch glove. They're going right at it. No love lost there. Ryan Thomas comes out with a heavy right kick. Trying to land some kicks. Ryan Thomas gets the quick takedown. He's in half guard, landing some seven inch blows right to the face of Thorpe. Didn't take long for this fight to go to the ground. Elbow. Tell you what, we said this fight was a title fight just a second ago. Forgot, ooh, and Thomas just landing Big some shots. huge right hands. And this fight gets back to the feet. Thomas with his back against the cage. Nice job by Thorpe to get off his back and get up. Thorpe throwing just a flurry of punches. And Thorpe tried a toss there. Didn't work out for him. Thomas in side control. In those short punches we were talking about, Thomas landing a bunch of them. As we were saying just a second ago, this is not a title fight no longer because Thorpe did not make weight. Thomas said, we're still going to fight, and I believe that Thorpe is going to owe him money for every pound that he was overweight. But Thomas did not want to miss this fight. He said, we're still fighting, and here these two are tonight. See Thorpe right now just kind of pinned on the bottom, trying to cover his face up, but not making any effort to get out of this position. Thomas just and he's delivered. not going to want to just keep taking these shots. I've seen a couple fights ended on those six inches, six inch punches. Thomas landing a ton of them early in the first round. He's having his way with Thorpe so far. Elbow, another elbow. Thorpe right now, what he needs to do is he's got to buck his hips. He has to explode. He's got to get out of this position because he is taking a beating as we stand right now. I'll tell you what, Thomas not ceasing to slow down whatsoever. Nice knee, knee to, to the, the body. body. Oh, that's going to hurt this guy's kidneys. Thorpe looks to be in trouble. Taking an absolute beating from the ground. Thomas dominating more knees oh. to the body. That's got to hurt. Right now, Thorpe still just stuck and not making any attempt to improve his position here. Now Thomas takes him out and has the back oh, of that's, Thorpe. That's arguably the worst position in all of MMA. Thorpe covering up, but this fight's not going to go on much longer unless that happened right there. Good job by Thorpe to at least improve his position. Thorpe surviving by a string. Not much left. This man's just covering up and taking a beating. Nice job by Gary Copeland, though, not ending the fight. Right now, Thomas has both hooks in. He is in a dominant position. He's going to want to try to flatten out Thorpe and possibly end this fight with a choke or with strikes again. Just nothing but covering up from Thorpe's part. He is trying to survive the next minute and last minute of this round, doing everything he can. He has taken about 100 punches this round, whether it was six inches away or not. I think that is not an exaggeration. <laughs> I don't think so either. And still, Thorpe and Gary Gary is calling the fight. This one's over. Thorpe not doing enough to protect himself. Dominant, dominant fight dominant fight for Ryan Thomas. Ryan Thomas just adding to his list of career wins. He's going to move to 20 and 20 and 8 all time. And like you said, just a dominant performance. Gary Copeland shaking his head saying, "Hey, 
Thorpe just didn't protect up himself well enough. Ryan Thomas, just from the uh, from the beginning, Bell, he dominated that fight, and he definitely deserves a victory tonight. Let's take a look at some of these punches that Thomas was this delivering is, to Thorpe when he was on top. This is where the fight was close to being called. Like you said, Gary Copeland did a good job to let that go. Thorpe did just enough to improve his position, so Copeland didn't have to call the fight. And uh, unfortunately for Thorpe, it didn't match last much longer than that. Well, that is our main event of the night. We're going to go ahead and take it down to Brady L. Davis as he'll give you the official decision of the fight. Your winner by referee stoppage due to any injury strikes. Ryan, the machine gun, McIntosh. Ryan Thomas here, the victor tonight. Coliseum Combat 30 main event. We got one second here. This is, uh, excuse me, this is Ryan Thomas, excuse me, Ryan Thomas uh, experienced something here just not too long ago. His uh, friend and good manager of four years, uh, Tim Wills, a uh, very good friend of his, uh, good man. Uh, welcome to the MMA community. They definitely here in Kokomo, a good friend of Coliseum Combat. Lost his life. Uh, this being your first fight without him around, uh, what would you like to say about Tim? Here a little bit from the guy that runs the show, Mark Slater. I don't know what that means. I'm going to try. I'm, I want to know what that means. That was, it seemed <laughs> Ryan, like a possible. Ryan Thomas called out an opponent um, that he would like to have for his next fight, and it looks like. He was here. That, that guy looked like a freaking athlete, was here, in my and, opinion. Uh, he said game on. So, so we'll, Ryan we'll Thomas if, uh, already has his next, his next opponent, probably. We'll see if uh, matchmaker, promoter, slash owner, Mark Slater, <laughs> can make that fight happen for us. Uh, so a quick recap. Let's go over the winners, Dan. Tell me who won tonight from the top. We've got okay. Okay. Congratulations to Ryan Thomas tonight, winner of the main event. Congratulations, to Daniel Head, winner of the co-main event. Reggie Merriweather won tonight. Christopher Sprinkle with uh, the knockout of the night, as, as Mark Slater just announced. Beautiful flying knee knockout. Jansen Go Lightly, big win. Congratulations to him. He has a Coliseum Combat belt. Kevin Purvis with a big knockout win. Congratulations to him. Charles Stanback, impressive again. Um, we had Paredes got injured with the knee, so win goes to Andre Henriquez. Uh, William Cockrell versus Steve Wallace was a close fight. That fight went the distance, first fight. Excellent card tonight. Uh, I think Slater did a really good job putting together an outstanding card for Coliseum's Combat's 30th event. It started out, hit the ground running, and it seems like the fights just got better and better throughout the night. Quick, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors again one more time before we sign off. Top of the line, Auto Detail, Sequel Motion, Burnett's Auto Sales and Service, Coffee Junkies. And we'd like to again extend our gratitude for your support to our product here at Fast Play Sports. 
again, one more time, we'd like to encourage all of our followers, if you are still listening to the program and you have not done so yet, follow us on Twitter, like our page on Facebook, facebook.com slash fastplaysports, or twitter.com slash fastplaysports. Find us at fastplaysports. Please, that's going to do it for us. As you see the graphic here for our Twitter, if you're not typing that into your search bar on Twitter right now, we're probably not friends. That's going to do it for us here at Coliseum Combat 30. What an amazing show we had with me. I'm Devin Schott. Alongside with me is Dan McCown. That's going to do it for tonight. We are Fast Play.